we haven't really had the opportunity to uh, go out and enjoy the weather for a long time. So yeah, it's good that the good weather's finally back. But um, yesterday we got another whispered ramble. I feel like I want to do rambles just because it has been a while and I just kind of want to talk to, with you guys and to you guys basically. Um, because these are quite I, quite, I quite like making these videos. So yeah, so the topic for tonight's ramble is video games. And I know that not everyone is into video games, but um, it's just something I, talk, I want to talk about really, just because uh, I do play video games. Um, and uh, the month of May there's been quite a few releases that I want to talk about. There goes my stomach, so if you can hear about that, there's been done <laughs> quite a few um, <laughs> uh, noises about those. So sorry about that, that was my stomach. I do want to re reiterate that. I'm hungry, I'm going to get some dinner after this. But um, yes. Video games, quite a few came out in um, in May. Uh, starting off with Resident Evil 8. Resident, 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 Resident Evil 8. And I was very, very, I was very, you know, excited about this game. Um, because my first ever entry into the series was Resident Evil 7. So yeah, admittedly, I was quite late into, you know, the, the, the franchise. But... I'm not that old, so I was never brought up on the Resident Evil games. There goes the whole slam. Um, so yeah, Resident Evil 7 was my first introduction, and I absolutely loved that game. I just love the, 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 the aesthetic of the game. How, like, it's, it's not scary, but it's, it's tense with its gameplay mechanics. So you always have just, um, just, just enough ammo to defeat all the enemies, you know, just enough health packs and whatnot. So it's, it does put you on edge when playing the game. And I completed it in one day, so like when I started it, you know, it was, it was the same day, the same evening, because I just didn't want to stop playing it, basically. Um, because the main game is not that long, it's only about nine, I think it took me like nine hours to complete, which, um, I mean, it was on Game Pass, so it didn't cost me anything. Well, technically, it cost me, like, £8, because that's what you pay for Game Pass. But, you know, technically, you know, free, I don't have to pay for the game specifically. Um, so, yeah, I, th I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I didn't mind it being too short, because I thought the gameplay was just amazing. Like, you have the Baker family, and what's his name, Jack Baker. He, he was terrifying, and because, the reason I found him terrifying, because the main character he plays is called... Ethan, and that's my name. I have mentioned that previously when talking about Resident Evil before, but I don't think many people know that, so if you didn't know that, here you are. Uh, my name's Ethan. Um, and the way they say Ethan and when, like, hunting you down and when you're, like, hiding is quite scary. And so when you have, like, because, you know, there's, there's psychology when you hear your name and whatnot, it, you know, it, there's some psychology analysis to do with that, so when you hear your name being called out in such a creepy tone, it, yeah, it does add some tension to, to the game, which I quite enjoyed. Um, as well, you don't really find many games with a name, Ethan, especially with the main character, so, you know, it, it was quite, it was quite cool, quite fun. Um, so yeah, to Resident Evil 8, in Resident Evil 8, you play as Ethan, Ethan Winters, the same guy from Resident Evil 7, and uh, don't worry, I won't get into spoilers here, I'm just going to be talking about how I just enjoy the game. Um, so yeah, I was very much looking forward to this reveal back when, I think it was honestly a year ago, back at the um, PlayStation event that they did last summer. <laughs> Resident Evil 8 was one of the games I showed off and a lot of people were excited because I think there was quite a few leaks beforehand where yeah, I think the leaks were like vampires and werewolves basically. That's what the uh, main consensus when going into Resident Evil 8. And I think they executed the game very, very well. I think in terms of the game structure it was more consistent than Resident Evil 7 because in Resident Evil 7, when you get to the ship, it kind of it kind of dips in quality. I didn't enjoy the ship because I know the ship sequence in Resident Evil 7 is very mixed. I wasn't a big fan of it. There was a lot of backtracking, a lot of similar corridors and whatnot. It just wasn't my taste really. And I found Resident Evil 8, you had no low point basically. I think every location you went to was as good as the 
other one. Yeah, maybe like um, the Castle of Dimitrescu was, um, you know, the highlight. But I mean, Heisenberg's factory was quite cool, even though it was a bit of a confusing structure. It was a bit like a maze, actually, with the first part, but I still enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, and like the gun, the gun mechanics were a lot better as well. I really enjoyed the shooting this time round. Um, and you had a much more, like, variety of um, weapons, which I really liked, which you could buy from the Duke. And the Duke is my absolute favourite character from the game. The Duke, I love him so much. He is so cool. And I think he, I think he is a fan favourite from that game. People really do like him because people already liked the, um, was it the Merchant from Resident Evil 4? Which I'm really excited to play when that gets um, remastered because I think it is, you know, getting remastered and that should be coming out next year. So I'll definitely pick that up. Um, and so, yeah, people, the Duke, he just, you know, he, he acts more than just a person that sells you stuff. He, he kind of takes you on the journey and he plays like a bigger part. I'm hoping there's some DLC to do with the um, Duke because people are theorizing that he's actually another house in the game because on when you're in here, uh, well, well, at one point in the game, his um, house-like symbol is shown, and it's an owl and whatnot, and it looks like the same as the other house's symbols. So hopefully there's some DLC to do with him, because he is more, there's more to him than what meets the eye, basically, and it's kind of pinned into at the game quite a few times. Because um, it seems like he does have some sort of abilities and powers like all the other house leaders. Um, so I'm really hoping we'll get some DLC out of him. And speaking of DLC, I reckon we'll get some more DLC on this, on a dagger, which you find during the game. Um, I won't say what it's used for, but you find a dagger and there's like no other mention of it. Because uh, I, won't, I won't say what happens to it. Um, yeah, just in case, but I reckon they're going to expand upon that dagger and that lore. Maybe, maybe something to do with that sort of history, which I think would be really cool. Because uh, I'm pretty sure DLC, that goes my stomach again, I'm pretty sure there is DLC coming up with a game. I mean, it would make sense, they buy DLC for number 7, so why not do it for number 8? And the DLC for number 7 is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, uh, bedroom, that escape game, great, amazing. 21, great game, I love 21. And then you have um, uh, Zoe, the Zoe one, um, I forgot what it's called, where you play as Jack's brother, you just go around just and stuff, you know, just acting like a badass basically. And then, oh, it's a bit of a high pitched thing right now. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, and then you had um, daughters, the uh, when you first find Evelyn and bring her, in, and the bakers bring her in basically. And there's a moment he plays Chris, I'm pretty sure, where you have to find her, Lucas, who's ran away basically. You have to hunt him down. So they have really good DLC, and I reckon they'll keep up that quality like they did with that DLC and Resident Evil 8. And you know, still make some really good, really good, really good, 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 yeah, it's scary, You're, you know, it's, it's crazy seeing them, but then after a while, you just, like, you just get bored of them, and then I think that's kind of kind of what put down the ship as well, was just more of the mold characters. Maybe if there was some different enemy variety on the ship, then yeah, that would have, you know, made the ship sequence a bit better, but the mold was just a bit boring. So I'm really happy they revised that and they realised that. And so there's quite a few enemy varieties. You do see some of the, you know, a lot of the same ones, like ghouls. Um, but um, for the most part, they're, yeah, it's quite refreshing. Um, last part of the game. Um, in terms of how scary it is, it's not like the scariest game. It's not, yeah, not scary by any means. Like, the part where I feel scared mainly is when they say Ethan, like in a weird way, but they didn't really do that much here, like they did with Seven, so really then it wasn't really like, yeah, but when, when Lady Dimitrescu said Ethan, <laughs> wow, that's a different story, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I really did enjoy Resident Evil 8, I thought it was really, really good, and um, I'm happy to see that the story is going to be continued into a third game, and it may be the final game for this like sort of trilogy with Ethan. Um, and uh, I wonder what they're going to do. I do wonder what they're going to do because um, with Resident Evil 7 it was more of 
of survival horror with Resident Evil 8 yeah it was survival horror but you did have more action aspects like when I say action I'm not talking about Resident Evil 5 and 6 I'm not talking about that heavy action I feel like it was a good balance of you know action there were some boss fights and some later later sequences in the game which you'll find out if you played it uh, some really cool action sequences I would say so I think they really balanced that all out really well and the story I really do like the story here um because with most games I kind of just you know forget the story kind of just goes over my head but this I really like the Resident Evil story right now um so I'm really excited to see where they take it and I reckon they'll do a good job but they 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 yeah they definitely will and at E3 I'm pretty sure we'll see our first glimpse or hopefully we'll see our first glimpse of some Resident Evil DLC I'm really excited for um um, E3, mainly for Breath of the Wild 2 we better get some Breath of the Wild 2 um, um, reveal, because um, if we don't there are going to be riots I feel like that's the game that the gaming community is probably most anticipated for it's the game I'm definitely most anticipated for, and there is expectation, and that is kind of it is kind of bad for expectation but they, they, they've mentioned multiple times that we will see Breath of the Wild this year, so E3 has to be that time. There goes my stomach again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's Resident Evil out of the way. Really good game. If I had to give a rating, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Resident Evil 7, I do actually prefer Resident Evil 7. Actually, I'd give that like a 9.5 out of 10. Maybe because it was the first one I played and I was really like taken back by it. But yeah, it's not like they're very... And I was like, like the way I was saying it, it kind of made me seem like I liked Resident Evil 8 a bit better. But really, they're so close. And I guess, I don't know, I, I preferred the setting. I don't know. I don't know why I prefer 7 edges. I don't know. I don't know, really. They're both, they're both pretty close. Maybe they're both 9.5s, but I think they're amazing. Um, so yeah, another game that I picked up was Hood Outlaws and Legends, which is a multiplayer Robin Hood style game. Um, so, if you haven't heard of it, Outlaws and Legends, basically two teams are put up against one another um, to steal money from a vault. <laughs> and basically, it's a PvPVE or PvEVP. So basically, players versus player versus AI. Um, um, so yeah, because you're up against another team, like I said, to steal the vault first. To steal the vault and, you know, crank the money. My stomach needs to stop doing that. <laughs> and he crank the vault, you know, to get money. Um, I haven't explained this too well. It's basically how it starts. You both start on, like, either end of the map. And you have to work your way towards the centre, taking out cards and whatnot. You have to be stealthy about it as well. Because if they spot you, like, gates will shut and whatnot. You'll have enemies swarm you. So you have to be careful. You have to have a careful approach. You have to find the sheriff who has a key. And you have to sneak up behind the sheriff and get the key for the vault. And then you have to locate the vault sometimes it's easier than other times it, um, because some maps are massive and then some maps literally have like one building so you have to find the vault i mean it does tell you where the vault is but you know get in there can take longer and at the same time there is an enemy team trying to um, achieve the same objective as you assume so sometimes you'll like clash into one another and then you have to fight each other off to keep hold of the game to find the vault and sometimes the enemy will find the vault first and then camp out there for you guys to come along. So really it is a game of like strategy I guess but by the time it just kind of goes into chaos in the second half. Like the first half, it's, I prefer the first half from honest, it's more stealth approached, it's a lot more, I don't know, communication. And then the second half is just kind of all out chaos and it kind of, the game just kind of falls apart in the second half really. Um, it's terms of uh, it, it's not the best game i played it's fun with friends playing on your own is enough i do not recommend playing nerd outlaws and legends on your own you won't have a good time but with friends yeah you have a good time i'd say and it, I, I if i'm honest i don't like how the winner is decided so basically once you get the money you have to take it to a crank on like another end of the map and both teams are then able to like crank the money up and say like um five like uh, one team gets five of the checkpoints of cranking the money and then the 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 team who hasn't got any cranks get the last like cranking objective they win the game and i don't really like how that works in my opinion i feel like it should be two separate like um cranking objectives for each team i feel like that'll balance out the game a bit more really it does confuse me why it's the same um for both teams i i really don't like that gameplay mechanic because i don't know um 
go back to the Tree of Life and because uh, I haven't completed the game yet. I haven't completed it 50 hours in and I've yet to complete it. So that sounds pretty good to you. I mean, <laughs> here's me just trying to sell the game because I feel kind of bad for the developers. A lot of people have been, you know, um, putting this game down, you know, and I don't really feel like it's getting, you know, the, the love it deserves. And maybe people were overhyping this game or had too many expectations, but I have no idea how people set up these expectations to be disappointed when they showed off everything they did. So I don't know where people got these ideas from to be disappointed, because I wasn't disappointed. Literally everything they showed is in the game. So I'm confused how people were saying how they were let down when they literally saw everything beforehand. It does confuse me. It does, really does confuse me, the reviews for this game. Like, nothing about this game is, like, they not, like they, they didn't lie at all. Maybe, like, which Cyberpunk did lie, technically. But this, like, these developers have not lied at all, and there's only 20 developers, so it's not a AAA game. I feel like that's maybe where people got confused as well. This is not a, a you know, a big production game. It's 20 people, which is not a lot. It's not AAA. It's a double-A game. And I don't I don't think that was communicated as well to people. Um, so yeah, maybe that's where they were disappointed. Maybe, I don't know, but again, I'm just really confused at why people just didn't like the game really. But yeah, that's just basically what I've been playing um, th this past month. And um, in terms of other games coming out, I'm not too sure <laughs> what else is coming out this year that I want to pick up. If Breath of the Wild does get a release date this year, then I would definitely pick that up because it, it will be amazing. It will be. And a lot of people are saying it's going to drop with the Switch Pro because if you've been looking at other, you know, console releases and Zelda releases, they always um, release at the same time. And you may say Skyward Sword may, well, may be that release, you know, Skyward Sword HD, but I don't think it, people are saying it won't be. Hopefully, hopefully they don't want that. And if they did a Switch Pro and Breath of the Wild 2 release, it would be insane. But there have been reports saying it will be another March release next year, which yeah, is not too far. But I would really love the game this year, so I'm fingers crossed. They announce that at E3 and have like its own direct, maybe down um, the line, which would be absolutely insane. The other games, Battlefield 6, that's another one I'm really hoping to pick up. Um, I am worried though that it will be next gen only. Um, I mean, I do have next gen, so I will be able to play it, but my mains don't have next gen. And, I, you know, is any point in that game if I can't play with my mates, you know? So I'm hoping it will be on both generations, just so I can play my mates. I really hope it does, because the way that, you know, the leaks come out, it does sound like a, a hefty game. You know, it sounds like a game that only maybe the next gen consoles can run. Um, so let's pray that, you know, it does come out on the um, older gen. And yeah, I guess we just have to wait for E3, really, just to see what else gets announced. I might do another ramble talking about E3. Because um, I do love watching E3. You know, it was kind of a miss last year with it not going on. And we had all like their, you know, own developers, like own presentations, which was alright, but it just, I don't know, it wasn't the same really. Um, Fire Cry 6. I couldn't care for that game. That game does not look good in my opinion, Far Cry 6. I was watching some trailers and whatnot, and I just wasn't not impressed by that game at all. Um, I do like the, the main character and the villain, though. They, they seem pretty good, but in terms of gameplay and the graphics, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? What were you on the 360? Like, what? So, um, yeah. Um, also, I wanted to talk about um, some future videos. I want I keep going about book reading I want to do. I'm definitely going to do book reading. I want to do another Triggers video. And shoe collection. Maybe next week. Maybe. It may be next week. Um, so yeah. I actually am going back home in the next coming week as well. And I'll be off to Plymouth as well. So I'm actually planning to do a video with Bella again in Plymouth. So that'd be pretty good. And I'm thinking of doing it. So like my... Uh, my girlfriend tries to give me tingles and whatnot, so she'll be the one in charge of doing everything. Making all the sounds and triggers, basically. So yeah, that should be quite fun. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say tonight. I know it's another ramble, but um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the rambles. And it's actually been a really weird glitch with YouTube recently. Like when I posted my video yesterday, I lost like almost 100 subscribers. But it's like on the YouTube studio, that's what it says, but then you go into my main channel and I haven't lost anything. And I just thought this was happening to me, but apparently it's happened to a lot of people. There's some like really weird thing happening with YouTube right now and subscribers. So hopefully it gets fixed because um, I keep, like, because we're all close to 5k and I checked and we just like 
one.